welcome to this session. We were talking about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which have covered the competency 1.16. Here, we will be discussing about gout. Now, if you look at this image over here, this gives you the classical presentation which you have in gout. If you can see over here, it is basically going to cause pain and swelling in the empty joints which is there and it could also result in swollen joints over there and these are basically as you can see because of accumulation of uric acid masses which are called as tophi or could be the presence of uric acid crystals in these joints. So what happens is that whenever we take a high purine diet it contributes to purine nucleotides and bases in the blood and they ultimately get settled in the serum and tissues. Not all patients who are having hyperuricemia will have a gout. Only those patients in whom there is a predilection to develop it, they will have a gout. So there is a difference between hyperuricemia and gout. Patients with the gout, they do have hyperuricemia. But all patients with hyperuricemia do not get gout. In addition to this, when we have obesity in a patient, there is tissue nucleotide synthesis and metabolism which also contributes to purine nucleotides and base. These all lead to increase in the uric acid and results in the formation of MSU crystals. Obviously, these uric acid can also be eliminated in the body, 70% from the kidneys and 30% from the gut. And in case they are getting deposited, they could be producing inflammation in the joint. And if you can see over here in a picture, here you can see the tophi, which can be seen in the ear pinna. When there is too much secretion of this uric acid in the kidney, it carries a chance of producing renal stones, which are uric acid stones. So remember, hyperuricemia, it may or may not precipitate gout, but carries a risk of producing a uric acid nephrolithiasis. So all those patients in whom there is high purine diet, those who are obese, they must take plenty of fluid so that the kidneys can flush out the uric acid which is there, which has a predilection to form uric acid crystals over here or uric acid stones over there. Now let's see what happens in gout. If you can see the synoviocytes as you can see over here, they phagocytose these urate crystals. The urate crystals once getting phagocytosed by synoviocytes, it secretes inflammatory mediators like prostaglandins and interleukin-1. These further attract and stimulate polymorphonuclear monocytes which further cause on activation release of leukotriene B4 and prostaglandins. So there is a cascading effect which is there. Synoviocytes they ingest or they phagocytose urate crystals and as a result of which they cause the release of inflammatory mediators like prostaglandins and interleukins. Prostaglandins, they attract and stimulate polymorphonuclear monocytes which further cause the release of leukotrienes and prostaglandins. In addition to this, this interleukins, it also attracts mononuclear phagocytes which further cause the release of interleukin-1 and they are responsible for aggravating this whole casket. So they are also going to ingest the urate crystals over here and this is how it goes forward. So the treatment that we recommend based on these pathogenesis is to use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which will inhibit the prostaglandins and inhibit the action on this polymorphs. In addition to this, the specific drug used in the gout that is colchicin, it acts on this neutrophils over here and as a result of which inhibits the further release of mediators like leukotriene B4 and prostaglandins. So here we have seen there are two important group of drugs which can be used. Number one are the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and the second is colchicin. In addition to this, remember we are talking about synthesis of uric acid. So all those drugs which are inhibiting the synthesis of uric acid would also be useful in the treatment of gout. So if you have to classify the drugs which are useful in gout, they can be classified based on the type of gout. So this classification is based on the type of gout. 
gout can be of two types one is acute gout another is chronic gout so those patients in whom there is acute manifestations because of ingestion or phagocytosis of these uric crystals which results in inflammation over here is called as acute gout the drugs which are useful are non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs we already have discussed about them colchicine we already have seen about the site of action of these drugs and corticosteroids in limited patients can also be used in case there is a single joint involvement the other type of gout is chronic gout so it's the one which is having manifestations for a longer period of time over here here we can use two different type of drugs so this is according to type of gout as well as the site of action so there are two important sites of action in chronic gout one is those which are inhibiting the synthesis of uric acid and the other ones are which are increasing the secretion of uric acid as you have seen over here whenever there is excess of uric acid in the body it is going to get eliminated mainly by the kidneys and to some extent by the git so either we inhibit the formation of this uric acid or we increase the excretion of this uric acid both of these will ultimately help in lowering the plasma concentration of uric acid and hence they do not get accumulated or it will not form tophi and get accumulated in various tissues in the body so the drugs which inhibit the synthesis are allopurinol and another drug that we have is fibroxostat and uricosuric agents which are used are probenecid and sulfinpyrazole we have two more new drugs which are now available these are raspberry case and peglotis case we will talk about these peglotis case is going to be useful in those patients who are having a resistant gout and raspberry case would be especially useful in those patients in which there is hyperuricemia which could be associated with malignancies the first drug is colchicin colchicin is an alkaloid which is obtained from colchicin alternate it is specifically suppressing gouty inflammation and in addition has anti inflammatory action remember it has no analgesic action colchicin can also be used as a diagnostic test so if you have a pain or you have arthritis over here and the pain is getting relieved by colchicin it indicates that this is because of gout colchicin is classically called as a tubulin inhibitor Vink alkaloids they are also inhibiting the tubulin over here so how does it act colchicin is a mitotic inhibitor it binds to tubulin causes depolymerization of microtubules it inhibits leukocyte migration and decreases phagocytosis it produces what is called as a mitotic arrest so the spindles that you can see over here so because there is depolymerization of microtubules if you look at the cells over here you'll find that there is a metaphase arrest which is going to happen over here this depolymerization is inhibiting the leukocyte migration and hence decreases the phagocytosis and hence it does not allow the progression of this inflammation to take place in addition to this it also acts on mononuclear phagocytes it inhibits the release of glycoprotein and which further causes inhibition of acute gouty arthritis The third mechanism is it inhibits the formation of leukotriene B4 if you look at the pathogenesis leukotriene B4 is further causing stimulation of this inflammation it also modifies the expression of endothelial adhesion molecules so all these four mechanisms are responsible for producing anti inflammatory effect of colchicin in patients with gout number 1 it is a mitotic inhibitor binds to the tubulin causes depolymerization of microtubules thus inhibits the leukocyte migration and decreases phagocytosis it inhibits the mononuclear phagocytes inhibits the glycoprotein and hence the result of which it decreases acute gouty arthritis thirdly it inhibits the formation of leukotriene b4 and fourthly it modifies the expression of endothelial adhesion molecules Now looking at the pharmacokinetics colchicine is rapidly absorbed large amount is secreted in the git it increases gi mortality colchicine is notorious for causing something which is called as bloody diarrhea it can cause hemorrhagic gastroenteritis so these features they are manifesting as bloody diarrhea it can cause nephrotoxicity can cause neuromuscular depression which is also seen by d tubocorare 
it can cause a granular cytosis a plastic anemia carries a risk of producing myopathy and also azospermia it causes vasoconstriction as well as causes vasomotor stimulation which can cause increase in the blood pressure so remember when you're using colchicin you have to be careful it is notorious for causing one of the dreaded adverse effect or very commonly seen which is bloody diarrhea and as well as it can cause increase in the blood pressure it causes other serious effects like a granulocytosis a plastic anemia myopathy and even azospermia so where do we use we use colchicine number 1 in patients who are having acute attack of gout as i said use of colchicine if it abolishes the pain is diagnostic for gout it also produces pain relief but remember you have to be very careful because it carries a risk of producing hemorrhagic diarrhea or bloody diarrhea it produces risk of other areas as i mentioned about a granulocytosis and even azospermia it can also be used in prophylaxis of gout when it is used with uricosuric or aropurinol now please try to understand what we have al already explained to you that uric acid concentration when increases in the blood in predisposed individuals it forms the crystals which are called as tophi so when you are going to decrease the uric acid in the blood by the use of uricosuric agents the body will try to maintain an equilibrium therefore the tophi will melt and will release uric acid into the circulation resulting in hyperuricemia so you have to be very careful when you are using uricosuric agents which at times can precipitate acute 